going to dive in and give you a really quick overview of uh, Kirimoto, the interface for this slicer. It's a 3D slicer for parts to, to be 3D printed. Uh, I'm going to assume you have uh, passing familiarity with such things. Um, and if not, you're going to be kind of lost. So this is the interface. It's got two control panels left and right. Um, they may not fit on your screen, so you can use your mouse to scroll up and down through them. You can collapse regions uh, for the activity you're doing in case there are things you care about or not. Um, you can click an object to select it, see the stats about it right there. Um, you can do some basic things like use arrow keys uh, or shift arrow keys to rotate your objects. Um, you can do things like uh, put it into wireframe mode. Um, and over here, the catalog shows you a list of things that you have that you can throw it on the table. The way that you add an object to the table is by dragging and dropping. Uh, the A arrange key will arrange objects on the table. It's over here. Uh, there are keyboard shortcuts for everything. So for example, top view or home view, you can hit a key for that. Um, so Kirimoto was created to uh, give you insight into what a slicer is doing into the mind of a slicer so that you can find out where the defects and flaws are and hopefully correct them. Um, in this case, I can just hit S to slice. It'll use the process settings here and we have sliced an object. Now, there are a bunch of layers that we can turn on and off to look at what's happening inside of an object. Um, you might want to uh, zoom up and down through this. You can do that through with number keys to zoom up and down. You can also use your mouse wheel and the shift key to zoom up and down like this. And you can also go into single layer mode where you can actually look uh, down and zoom down through the layers to get a better idea of what's going on here. Now, um, the default view that you have here shows you uh, traces, which are the shell outlines, uh, the solid infill, and uh, the sparse infill. And then the green areas are areas denoted as um, overhangs, bridges, or flat areas. And these uh, need to be filled by the slicer so that your object can be complete. And they're called out in the green highlight you have here. If you don't want to see that, the green highlights, you can turn those off. Um, if you don't want to see the traces, you can turn those off, which is actually sort of an interesting view in and of itself, you can actually turn off the, uh, the infill and you can see just the flat areas that have been detected by the slicer. If you want to just see the raw slice as the slicer sees it, this is the, this is the object uh, with the pure outlines before any other post-processing is applied to it, you can do that. Um, let's go back to sort of the useful view where we show the fills and the solids. Uh, I like to see the solids because it helps me understand what the slicer sees in terms of areas that need to be filled in. Um, by default, support is turned off. Uh, so even if we say visible there, it's not showing. Uh, if I add support here, I'm just going to crank it up. It's going to recalculate my object and show me the support structures that it's created right there. When we're ready to print this thing, uh, we can hit preview um, or the P key, and that will preview the print. Uh, in this case, we have a brim. We can actually zoom up and down through the print and see the movements. And when you're ready to download this thing, you basically just hit print and it's going to download the G code. Um, I can go right back into the arrange setup by hitting A. I can go back into slice by hitting S for slice again. Um, and uh, let's see, that is good for now.